Hi guys, thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today our question comes from our free Facebook group, Empowering Moms to Uplift Kids, and it says, how old were your kids when they started wiping themselves after potty training? And this, of course, is just one piece of a whole broad range of questions around potty training. And in Sure Parenting, one of the main things that we strive for is trusting our children. And there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of approaches to potty training. There's lots of books that promise you can make your kid be completely diaper free in three days or zero days or one day or one hour. Just it's endless. And the thing is, it's not necessary at all. Um, so there are kind of a camp of people who believe in what's called elimination communication. And for those families, what works for them is they start to essentially practice using um, toilets from birth, from a couple months old, and it's a whole group. Um, there's specific ways to do it, there's specific tools to do it, and for some families that works great. The argument being that you're born knowing how to go potty, right? You, you, you basically can eat and poop when you're born, just on your own. Um, and so why train a kid to use diapers and then have to untrain them later? So that's kind of the premise of it. And it makes sense. And it's a lot of parent intensive involvement. So if that works for you, awesome. That did not work for me. Like at all. Um, I knew about EC and my first two, I just wasn't interested. Uh, with my third, I was interested but also she was the third. I had two other kids I was homeschooling and I decided that I would try once she was able to sit kind of independently so I didn't just have to hold her on the toilet. Um, but one of the things that makes EC easier is sort of a schedule. They're like, oh, you'll learn, like when did they poop every day? She doesn't have a schedule, like at all. So it really wasn't predictable. Um, it wasn't easy for me to see any signs. Ultimately, I decided that that wasn't going to be a good fit for us. When I was trying it and I was putting her on her little potty, she would just climb right off. So she wasn't digging it. I wasn't really interested in, in obsessing over her bathroom habits. It was easier for all of us if she just used her diapers and then I changed them. That isn't how every parent feels and that's okay because it's your family and you get to decide. Um, but I have friends whose kids were completely body drained at like nine months old because they did AC and it worked great for them. So totally your choice. So that's kind of like the far of one end. On the other end is where I end up landing. And that is your kiddo will tell you when they're ready. They live in your house. They follow you to the bathroom, almost certainly. They know what a toilet is. They will use it when they're ready. Um, with my oldest, I wanted to try all of the things and nothing worked, not one. So for him, um, he, he just wasn't ready. And I was concerned because I had the friend who did EC, so her kid was totally potty trained. And I had another friend whose young toddler was super interested in the potty. Granted, he had a lot of accidents. Um, so it's not like he was fully potty trained without accidents, but he just was way more interested than my kid was. And those, both of those kids were younger than mine. So of course, comparisonitis sets in and self-doubt and those, oh man, am I doing enough? What if I'm wrong? All of that kind of stuff. Um, and fortunately, my oldest is incredibly stubborn. So it didn't really matter what I wanted. He wasn't ready. It wasn't going to happen. Um, and also, fortunately, we had a pediatric urologist who essentially told me, chill out, mom. Just stop. You're trying to push something way before he's ready. And he was two and a half. Um, and the, the pediatric urologist said, stop. Stop stressing about it. Stop pushing it. Stop asking him. Stop trying to leave him naked all day. Like, just let him be. He'll do it when he's ready, probably around three and a half. And about three and a quarter, um, one day we ran out of diapers. And we went out to the garage to get more diapers. And that was the box that was completely empty. And I said, oh, we're out. 
And he went, oh no. And I said, what are we gonna do? And he said, I don't know, go buy more. And I said, hmm, what if I didn't do that? Then what could we do? And he said, I guess I pee on the body. And that was it. He was completely potty trained instantly. Never had an accident. He had a couple at night, um, way later when he was constipated. Uh, but he never had a daytime accident ever because he was ready. And once he was ready, it, it wasn't a training. It was just, he's ready. So he did it. Um, this can get tricky when your kid's in a preschool that essentially won't let them follow their natural development. For one, that's a red flag. Might want to look at a different preschool. Um, but, you know, you can aim to teach them, you know, a new skill before they're ready, but you have to be very careful with it. You never want to create a negative association with the potty. You never want to try to force them to use the toilet before they're ready. It can cause all kinds of issues. It can cause constipation. It can cause holding. It can cause anxiety. It can cause fear. It can cause them to end up holding, and then they have really painful BMs, bowel movements, and that leads them to hold again, and it just, it can get really bad. So it's not worth it. If your kid is super excited and really wants to go potty, and they, it's super easy, you teach them how to do it, they wanna do it, you know, and you have no resistance, follow your kid, focus on the kid in front of you. But if you're like most parents who are pulling your hair out because potty training is so dang hard, then stop. It's that hard because they're not ready yet. My second ended up potty training closer to four. Um, and I was a little bit concerned because I was like, what on earth, right? But he got it. He got it in his time. You have to remember they're doing the best they can. Okay. You never want to punish anything related to potty training. You never want to punish period, but it's not something they're out to get you. It's malicious. There's nothing like that. And, and it's really important to understand developmentally what's going on. There are a lot of layers to potty training. It's not simply understanding that they need to pee in the toilet. A lot of parents think, well, they understand. I ask them, where are you supposed to go? And they say potty and they just choose to poop in their pants. Well, no, there's a lot more to it. There's physical readiness, which you cannot assess. Their own body internally assesses that as part of the proprioception sense. Can they feel inside of their body when they need to go? Do they recognize those sensations as potty sensations? Have they connected those to elimination yet? You can't control that. Then there is um, emotional readiness. Some kids just aren't ready emotionally yet. You can't really determine that either other than after the fact. If they're having a hard time, if they're really anxious, you can tell, eh, I guess they weren't ready, right? There's uh, social readiness. Sometimes they just don't have the ability to stop what they're doing and stop playing and go potty. That's okay. They'll do it when they're ready. Um, some, uh, let's see, so physical, social, emotional, and mental. Mental is usually the one that parents will argue with. They understand, they know it, that what the potty is. They know they're supposed to go in the potty. Absolutely. But there's three other layers to this. Just because they know doesn't mean they can, right? They know how to drive a car. They know you turn the steering wheel and you drive. You would never put your two-year-old in the driver's seat of a car just because they know that a car drives, right? Knowing isn't enough. There's other things that have to be in place as well. So take a deep, deep breath let it out, let it out forcefully, push all of the anxiety away and give yourself a break. It is okay if your kid is still in diapers or pull-ups and it's okay to make that call as a parent. Maybe your kid is two and they're like, no, I really, really want to be potty trained. Awesome. Let's try it. You know what? You've had 10 accidents today. You're not quite ready. We are putting on diapers again until you're ready. I don't want diapers. I hear you. Your body's not quite ready. We'll try again in a little while. I'm putting diapers on you because I don't want to go clean up pee every you know, half hour, right? They, they wanna do it for the fun of it. They wanna do it because it's exciting, but they really aren't ready. And it's okay if you recognize that as the parent. And it's okay to try and to change your mind. There's a, a lot of fear out there about 
um, consistency. Once you start, you can't stop. Baloney. Utter, utter baloney. That's not real life. All the time we start things and we realize that wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I changed my mind. That's okay. You're allowed to do that. You're absolutely allowed to do that. So follow your kid's lead. If you want to try something, try it. Recognize the risks that you are taking. You want it to be incredibly positive. You want it to be child-led. You want it to be happy for everyone. You don't need to, you know, give rewards and, and, and make a federal case about it because that can actually have the opposite effect of making them uncomfortable. Like, dude, I just peed. I've been doing that since I was born. What is wrong with you people, right? Some kids enjoy that, but some don't. You know, you are the expert at your own child. So you have to follow their lead and know what, what's going on for them, but really focus on them. Don't focus on society. Don't focus on the mommy blogs, including mine. Um, don't focus on the other kids at preschool. It doesn't matter. You were given your child to parent, not anyone else's. And you get to do what works for your family, not anyone else's. So if somebody is giving you a hard time, you can just say, look, He'll do it when he's ready. I promise he won't go to college in diapers, right? You can say something like, this is what works best for our family. We're trusting him. We trust him to let us know when he's ready. And most likely the person who says whatever that is, you know, that critical comment, they've never really considered it from that perspective, right? They're just being pushed as well by society and preschool and whatever. It's not a race. By the time they're six or seven, nobody's gonna know who potty trained first. Nobody's gonna care. It'll never come up again. And if it's not gonna matter in five years, why does it matter now? Okay? So alleviate some of your stress, follow your child, do what works for you. Deal? All right, so back to the original question. After potty learning, a lot of kids, a lot of kids struggle with wiping. For one, that proprioception, right? Where is your body in space? You can't see behind you. So to reach back and try to wipe can be really tricky. To do it well, even trickier. So there is an awesome, cute little Montessori video with um, two balloons tied together and a Montessori teacher teaching kids how to wipe between the balloons, right? So sure, do something like that if you want to. Also, it's okay if you're still helping your five-year-old wipe. It really is. You're helping them with their hygiene. That's your job as a parent. There's nothing wrong with them. They're not behind. Do what works for your family. Uh, the comments, there's 46 comments. Most of them were five, six. One lady said her eight-year-old calls every once in a while, but she's getting uncomfortable with it, so she's putting a kibosh on that. That's fine. Eight-year-olds can reach. Um, a lot of little three-year-olds can't reach. And you don't really watch them usually. Uh, but if you do, you'll notice they're like, feel like they're going to topple off, right? So ways you can make it easier is one, help them practice when they're not actually covered in human excrement. <laughs> That's a very stressful time for a kid. They don't want to get it on their hand. They don't want to get it on their clothes. They don't want to get it on the toilet. They're freaking out, right? So help them practice when there's no pressure. Um, Make sure there's a stool for their little feetsies to be on. It also helps with elimination. It helps them to feel secure like they're not going to fall. There's some super cool toilet lids that have a kid toilet lid inside of it so that they won't fall in the toilet. Um, make sure they can reach the toilet paper easily. Uh, some moms said they put in bidets. Awesome. You know, there are options. There's always options. But the bottom line is to take a deep breath, relax. Follow your child. They will show you what they need. Trust. Anything that's coming from a place of fear, let it go. If you have a legitimate concern, talk to your doctor. That's what they're there for. You hire them. Use them for what they're there for. But beyond that, don't stress about it. They will figure it out. You will not have to change diapers forever. Okay? Thanks so much for watching, guys. Make sure you like down below, subscribe so you can see other videos as they are published, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye, guys.